So friends, we're in the first week here of the, the season of Lent where we're invited to pray and fast and give alms in a more intentional way. And the Lord today in our gospel is teaching us about prayer. But it's, it's, a, it's a somewhat challenging teaching because he commands us to pray, but then he says things like, your father knows what you need before you ask him. So what's the point? Right? Isn't that not the question? Have we not wondered that? I know I've wondered that, right? I've, I, that's a question I get from the kids in the school all the time. If God knows what we need, what's the point of asking anyway? What's the point of asking anyway? Well, the point of prayer is not so much the, um, the information interchange as it is the relationship, right? That's the point. If you don't have a prayer life with the Lord, you don't have a relationship with the Lord. It's said this way that if, you know, prayer is not something that's going to help your relationship with the Lord. It is your relationship with the Lord. So it's not about the information exchange as much as it is about the relationship established. So here's the thing that Jesus says, though. Notice, of course, though, that he doesn't say don't pray. He says don't babble. That's the distinction. Don't babble like the pagans. What's the difference here between babbling like the pagans and praying like a Christian? The difference is the heart. The heart is the huge difference. Like, we can say a lot of beautiful things, many beautiful sounding words and phrases while praying and and not actually be praying. I know I'm guilty of this, right? We can say a lot of beautiful things out loud, either just by ourselves with a group, like, but we might not actually be praying because prayer is an actual genuine dialogue from the heart to the heart. That's what it is. I was thinking about this, and uh, some memories were coming up. You know, I love my brother priest, and I love, when I was in seminary, I love my brother seminarians. But man, oh man, there were some times when, when a guy was praying before, you know, like a meal, and you would think he was giving some State of the Union address he's up there for, like, I feel like we've been up here for 15 minutes. The food's getting cold, right? Like, beautiful sounding words, beautiful sounding prayers, but man, it's like, The plane is just never landing. It just never lands. And then it does, and then you can finally eat. But I'm sure I was guilty of this too. I mean, heck, I'm sure I was. You guys here know, you know how I preach. Anyway, um, here is the big thing that changed for me about this whole distinction of babbling like the pagans and praying like a Christian. It was the summer of 2013, uh, myself and two other seminarians from Cleveland, who are both now priests, the three of us took part in this 10-week-long spirituality intensive on the campus of Creighton University in Omaha. It's called the Institute for Priestly Formation. An unbelievable experience for seminarians. Um, And while I was there, I met this man. His name is Deacon James Keating. Deacon Keating was the director of spiritual formation there at the time. Um, I had a class with him. And the first day we come in and he begins the class, you know, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. And I'm thinking, because I've been very impressed by some of the things he had said before. I'm like, what's his prayer going to sound like? You know, it's going to be really beautiful. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. And then what he said next literally changed my life. He just simply said, Jesus, take us to the Father. And then it was silence for about a minute. And then sign of the cross, and that was it. Like, he, he didn't do what I I grown so accustomed to hearing like many beautiful sounding words and phrases like this beautiful theological soliloquy now like when he said Jesus he was addressing he was speaking heart to heart person to person there was Jesus directly in front of him whom he was addressing and then instead of just babbling he simply asked the thing that his heart that all of our hearts most want which is take us to the father Bring us to the one who is the source of all goodness, all beauty, all love, all consolation. Bring us there to the place where we all want to go. Like he cut through all the babbling, just like Jesus in the gospel today, cuts through all the babbling and says, this is how you are to pray. Our Father. Right? That's how he does it. He cuts through all the babbling. Take us to the heart of it all. So friends, I'm just going to end with this. Just two thoughts, just so I'm not babbling up here. I'll land this plane, I promise. Two thoughts about this. When we're praying, whether we're sitting in silent adoration before the Lord in the chapel or whether we're praying a novena, praying you know, the rosary, any of the other church's prayers, but when we're praying, 
our hearts have to be engaged. It cannot just simply be a head thing. It can't just simply be your mouth moving. Like, let your heart be engaged. All the spiritual masters of the tradition, they all recommend two things, especially two things when it comes to prayer. First is the environment of silence so that you can actually hear what is happening, what's transpiring in your heart. And second, slow down. Slow down. So you can actually hear and feel the weight of the words. Like one slow Our Father is better than a 50 Our Father. One slow Our Father is better than that. So friends, we have to let our hearts be engaged. That way we're not babbling like the pagans, but we're praying like Christians, talking to, talking with our Father. Amen.